urolithiasis, urinary calculi, or kidney stone, or bladder stone, or it's also known as malt belly. So it's a metabolic disease of bugs and withers. It's a uh, male-oriented disease. Uh, it's gender-biased disease, and more commonly seen in bugs and withers. And it's characterized by it is urolithiasis, that means stones. And what happens to stones? There is formation of concretions within the urinary tract. These concretions will do naturally. They will obstruct the outflow of urine. So urine outflow, outflow will be uh, impeded. So there will be obstruction. And contributing factor is that the male urethra, uh, especially it is narrow and long and blocks will be there. You can see it is narrow and long and you can see the blocks at specific point locations like urethral process or the sigmoid flexure. So this is to uh, show you that uh, you know, the sigmoid flexure where actually this uh, chance uh, will cause the obstruction in the sigmoid flexure as well as the urethral process. And if it is in the urethral pro process, I think it is very easy to remove also. So what is actually the causes of this condition? Development of stones in the bladder or the kidney. High concentrate diet. The concentrate diet, when it contains excessive phosphorus, so high phosphorus intake can lead to this condition. And magnesium and ammonium sulfosphate uh, precipitate to form concretion of or calculus. So especially the phosphate, that is magnesium as well as ammonium phosphate have a tendency to precipitate. And they form this concretion of calculi of about the sand-like particles may be there sometimes or it may uh, become as big as 5 to 10 millimeters in size. The most common type of stones uh, that fall under calcium phosphate and stu white, we know that it's magnesium ammonium uh, phosphates. Other causes high phosphorus, uh, less calcium diet. Calculi often have the appearance of the sand, sandy particles will be there. When the urine is alkaline, there is high potassium intake in forages. So that also again aggravate the predisposed for the formation of this condition. And another fact is vitamin A deficiency. So you know that vitamin A it is, it is very essential for the maintenance of the epithelial tissue. Uh, integrity of the epithelium is maintained by vitamin A. So when this uh, vitamin is deficient, uh, there is some changes or damage or the uh, degeneration of the lining uh, cells of the urethra and there will be exfoliation. The when there is degeneration, they uh, die, then they exfoliate in the lumen, and that actually form a needles, a center, a focus for the uh, formation of the crystals. So that is again another predisposing factor. And uh, uh, this happens most frequently during winter or periods of very warm weather. That is the kind of weather also uh, predisposed by because in these uh, conditions, the animal may consume less amount of water. So when the water consumption is reduced, that again become another limiting factor or predisposing factor for the development of this condition of urolithiasis. So the clinical signs that is actually when the animal is having these stones, the bladder or the kidney, and that may be there for some time, but the animal may not show symptoms until there is obstruction. So when there is partial or complete obstruction of the urethra, then the sand clinical symptoms start. The animal will be showing uneasiness, frequent attempt to urinate, and straining. That is very common condition seen in animals, especially this uh, male uh, bugs. The animal may also uh, have constipation and frequent dribbling of small amount of urine, which may be blood tinged sometimes, and crystal deposits may be collecting on the perpetual hair. So you can, when you closely examine the animal, you can see the perpetual hair may have some crystal uh, deposits. And this is a bladder containing uh, stones. Because this pain and uneasiness, they refuse to take feed. Food will not be taken and they isolate from the group and they kick at the abdomen. Poor animal, they'll be having pain and they'll kick at the abdomen. Because of this, you know, all these actions, sometimes, you know, the bladder may rupture and the abdomen may enlarge. Sometimes the urethra rupture, lower abdominal wall become thickened. And uh, when there is a rupture of this bladder or urethra, that time the animal may show some temporary improvement. That means that pain is uh, relieved. But as time progresses, the animal become more depressed 
and you know that when there is a rupture there will be peritonitis and all sorts of problems and eventually the animal will die so it is a very severe condition as far as the is concerned just to show you the passion carbonate urolits uh, that is taken uh, it is from a 4.6 year old neutered male goat so you see how the how, how beautiful are these stones uh, with the uh, concretions now you can see these crystals on the prepucial hair also so the treatment of this condition it is you know that there is some obstruction in the uh, urethra so uh, we need to remove that obstruction that means uh, often surgery is uh, mandatory if the blockage is at the urethral process it is very easy it is not very easy but it can be stripped up by surgery a simple surgery will do and uh, you can also give some oral ammonium chloride or anionic salt products uh, that is to dissolve the stones but if the blockage is higher that means the location is very higher then it's not easy to snip snip it off but it may warrant a perineal urethrostomy and it's a salvage procedure as the whole heals up in a week uh, takes some time a week's time and it's not a suitable option for breeding buck because once it is undergone uh, surgery means uh, that sometimes the animal may not be able to breed later so it is done in very rarely Uh, in breeding uh, cases, sometimes uh, people also uh, they resort to expensive surgery uh, where they have to open uh, open surgery that is abdomen is open, bladder is open, and then particularly it is drawn uh, from the bladder into the urethra and the stones are flushed down to the pain. Sometimes, rarely it is tried that way also. If it is successful, that means you can re remove all the stones. You can use that uh, uh, breed um, the the buck again for breeding, but uh it is not that much you know uh, easy but it is a, the recovery will be a uh, little bit prolonged so uh, prevention is here it is much uh, you know easy for you to uh, get rid of this malady uh, but this is a condition better prevented than treated so treatment is uh, it is it is rather you know uh, painful as well as time consuming and uh, it is rather tricky so you can prevent this condition by by properly uh, giving the diet the diet should have a calcium phosphorus ratio 1.5 to 2 to 1 is, is to 1 that means um, uh, you should uh, you know regulate the phosphorus uh, calcium phosphorus uh, intake and salt should be included at 1% of total dry matter intake and plenty of fresh palatable water should always be available that is a very easy thing that you can uh, confirm in your uh, farm giving plenty of water palatable fresh water and uh, you avoid the diets high in potassium that also giving some uh, you know mineral imbalance and vitamin a should be there in the feed uh, it should be optimum you can give some green fodder also and ammonium chloride in the ration at 0.5% of dry matter intake sometimes that may help the animal especially for kids on green grains and then another thing is that you must avoid other conditions like you know coccidiosis pneumonia all these conditions can can compel the animal to reduce the water intake so any condition that will reduce the water consumption that should be uh, curtailed